Hello everybody and welcome to Dining for Women's Google Hangout. I am Veena Khanke, the Program Director for Dining for Women. And today with us we have Laura Haight, Dining for Women's Communications Consultant. Hi Laura. Good morning everybody. And we have Leah Rashidian, who is the Vice President of the Board of Directors for Mama Baby Haiti. Hi Leah. Hi. Mama Baby Haiti, which is the featured program for the month of April for Dining for Women, was founded in the year 2010. This was a reaction or an action post-earthquake in Haiti. The Mama Baby Haiti clinic functions primarily for women and children. And now I'm going to invite Leah to tell us more about Mama Baby Haiti. Go ahead, Leah. Thanks so much, Vina. Uh, yeah, we are Mama Baby Haiti, and uh, we primarily act as a birth center and clinic for women and children. And uh, we are so thrilled to be featured uh, by Dining for Women and really excited to share with you about this program that um, has been designed uh, with women in mind and um, us trying to determine how we can best serve women in a holistic way. So I'm going to go ahead and start the slideshow. Uh, so that we can talk about this program. So first I'll just start off by giving you a brief idea um, of the work that Mama Baby does currently uh, to explain, to lead into the program and how it came about. Um, Mama Baby Haiti operates as a free birth center and clinic in Northeast uh, Haiti and we're just off the coast of the, of the north end of the island and um, our primary model is uh, to have Haitians caring for Haitians. And so we're staffed by Haitian uh, midwives and clinic staff. And we're supported by international volunteers and the board. And um, we think that by promoting and building education um, for our Haitian providers, uh, it's the best way that we can create a sustainable vision to support the work. Um, so as our services, we've provided prenatal, birth, postpartum, and newborn care, and uh, we have a strong focus on education that we'll talk about that's also incorporated in the grant program. So I'd like to emphasize how much we believe in providing women with an education along with their health care. Uh, we strongly believe that if we're not educating them, we're missing the opportunity to break the cycle of poor health outcomes related to misinformation. So this is just one of our pictures of an infant massage class that one of our midwives was leading. Um, we had high demand. Women loved this class, and it was a time for us to promote bonding um, and education for moms. So I'll just give some statistics so you can have an idea of the volume of patients that we see. Last year, um, 452 babies were born at the birth center. We provided over 5,000 prenatal visits. We followed over 1,200 postpartum mothers and their newborns. And we also saw over 65 women for family planning services. Um, that number is lower than we would like it to, do, to be, and that's part of um, why the family uh, planning services came out of this upcoming grant. So the grant program, the Well Women in Northern Haiti program, um, came out because we began to ask ourselves, um, you know, what other things do we need to address for Well Women Care? And um, the statistic that really shocked us was uh, learning about the incidence of cervical cancer in Haiti and the lack of regular screening. So uh, that was one component we definitely wanted to address. Another is the rates of sexually transmitted infections are very high and affect both women's health care and also pregnancy outcomes. Uh, so we saw a need for that. And again, our patients were expressing interest in spacing their children or um, in gaining education. And um, through chart reviews, we found that a third of them were asking us for this. And so through their requests and us wanting to meet those, um, we started to ask ourselves, how can we address these? You know, here in Haiti, um, we do have barriers to care, um, a large one being poverty, that you know, two-thirds of Haitians are living on about $2 a day, um, and half of those on just over a dollar a day. And so, of course, that's a barrier to care um, in receiving health care for women especially. And the other barrier to care um, is access. 
you know, local hospitals are very impacted um, addressing high-risk conditions, and so the availability of primary and preventative care, um, it's not just overlooked, but it's also often inaccessible. And then when talking about cervical cancer, um, there's no local laboratory or pathologist to process both pap smears that we traditionally use in the U.S. and also HPV tests. And so um, that was a huge barrier to care in figuring out uh, how do we serve this need. So this is the question we have, what do women in Haiti need to receive comprehensive well women health care? And um, again, we strongly believe in the model of Haitians caring for Haitians. Um, and so the idea of uh, providing local caregivers who are both competent and respectful in their care was important. Um, we wanted to provide continuity of care in a fragmented system that's underfunded. It's often difficult to, to supply that throughout the lifespan. So that's something that was important. Um, also, you know, there's a lot of modern technology that can address needs, but we have to ask ourselves in low resource settings, how is that sustainable? Uh, and, you know, again, the education component, educating women about their bodies and their health was something that seemed very evident that they needed. And again, from their requests, um, asking us access to family planning. Um, that's a picture of one of our midwives in one of our education classes sitting with mothers. So this is where the Well Woman in Northern Haiti program um, was born. And uh, the first component that I've mentioned is the cervical cancer screening and treatment. And the way that we're going to do this um, is through visual inspection with acetic acid. Uh, it's recommended by the World Health Organization for setting Basically, it's uh, taking white vinegar and um, putting it on the cervix and visually inspecting to see if any cells, abnormal cells, turn white. Um, it's a quick way to see if there's, you know, abnormal growths uh, that are an indicator to cervical cancer um, developing later in life. So this program is a see and treat model. Um, cryotherapy is a simple procedure that can be taught and it essentially just freezes the cells on the cervix to prevent it from developing into cervical cancer. Um, again, it's recommended by the World Health Organization and um, it's been used in other developing countries, these methods. The VIA is what we call it with cryotherapy. And of course, again, um, a huge component is training Haitian healthcare providers in these methods so they could be easily reproduced, not only in this program, but our hope is throughout Haiti. The next component is sexually transmitted infection testing and treatment. Um, through the services we've been providing to women at the birth center, it's become evident that sexually transmitted infections are a very prevalent problem, but the rapid test and the treatment options um, are often unavailable due to finances, but also to access. So we uh, found that that would be an important thing to treat both in our prenatal pregnant women and in well, well women healthcare. And again, um, family planning, education and services, treat, teaching women about their bodies and uh, helping them understand um, their cycles and, you know, the general um, information that women need to know in order to um, make informed decisions. As part of this program, um, women will have to attend a mandatory education class. Um, we have found women to be very eager, eager for education classes at our center, and um, they'll often, often travel from kilometers away to come. And so we found that the demand for education often exceeds our, our ability to provide it, so we're sure that women um, will be glad to receive this and participate. Uh, as part of the outcomes of this program, we're, uh, our goals are to increase cervical cancer screening by 160 women a month um, and increase sexually transmitted infection screening by 300 women a month. And then, of course, we would treat any sexually transmitted infections. Um, and over the course of the year, we expect for um, just over 4,000 women to complete the education course and receive each of these services. 
So here's a, one of my favorite patient quotes. Um, she said, I like Mama Baby Haiti because the nurses, the midwives, they talk to me wisely, creating a collaborative relationship between um, our patients and our midwives where they trust them, um, they understand their culture, obviously, they're both from Haiti, and um, can share wisdom and education with them. And one other picture of one of our education classes um, where a patient said, I felt stressed, but they helped me at the class because I would not have enough money to go to a hospital or birth center so they can take care of me and the babies. But when I came here, they did good things for me. They gave me meds, free care, and I love that. That is certainly our goal. Um, and we uh, love this program because it gives us an opportunity to expand uh, well woman services um, to those who are not pregnant and maybe who need more education and more resources and more information and um, along that vein that's why we believe that healthy women make for healthy families and if we can um, educate women to be empowered um, to take care of their health and understand more about it then that's what we're here to do and um, we're excited to partner with Dining for Women for that. So just wanted to say thank you um, to Dining for Women chapters and the impact that you have. Um, we're really excited to, to implement this program and um, really glad that we could partner this way. Well, thank you, Leah. Um, I have a few questions for you. Now, in the cancer um, the screening program, since you may come across a young woman whose cancer you have screened and treated, are you expecting that at some point that you would hope that she returns to be screened again, maybe 10 years later, five years later? Yeah, absolutely. Um, more than anything, the model would be for us to start this screening program, to train the, health, the, the Haitian healthcare providers, and then to develop a pathway where we can refer women um, to continue to receive care if there is cervical cancer, for, for there to be pathology services to process that so that uh, it can be addressed holistically. And we're actually partnering with uh, Dr. Leslie J Jager, who is a chapter leader in Minnesota, and she's one of our um, primary trainers for this program for our Haitian healthcare providers. And uh, she's done training in different developing countries, and we're really excited that she's um, on board with this program um, to help us develop those pathways and develop our our patient healthcare providers. Well, how wonderful about that connection with Dining for Women. <laughs> well, can you give us an idea of what the geographical reach is for your program? Give us an example how far these mothers and these women have to walk or travel to come and visit the clinic. Yeah. So we're just outside of Cap Haitian, which is the second largest hate, uh, city in Haiti. And um, we're along one of the main highways. And so what's wonderful is we're easily accessible by public trans. And um, jumping on a tap tap is easy for women. Um, we have women come from kilometers around us, uh, up to 10, often for even laboring women. and. Um, Again, we found that they're so eager to receive these services and have a healthcare provider who will explain um, and answer all of their questions. That um, it's really worked well as far as our position, but also being so accessible to so many women in the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's wonderful. I did forget to mention that you are speaking to us from Haiti. <laughs> so, um, I hope you're enjoying the weather. <laughs> uh, now, in your program, you do talk about uh, trying to recruit lots of um, uh, mothers and to recruit women to come to the clinic. So how do you hope to achieve those numbers? What does your outreach plan look like? So because cervical cancer has not been really on the radar of health of healthcare here in Haiti, many women don't even know what their service is. <laughs> and so as part of this program, um, one of the positions that's included is a full-time community health worker whose job throughout the entire year is to go out into the community, provide education, um, and 
tell women about this program and um, recruit patients to come. And so we're really excited about that because, again, we really don't want this program to be um, a narrow program where it's only us providing this. We want the education to get out. We want women to know about cervical cancer and about sexually transmitted infections. And the only way that they can know is if we have someone going out in the community, sharing this information in a culturally appropriate way, uh, and telling women that you know now there's an opportunity for you to come and get screened. And so we're really excited about that position and about the knowledge that she'll be able to share with our community. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, my next question has kind of two parts. What are the challenges that Mama Baby Haiti is um, facing? And in that sense, so what are your future plans if the two are related? Yeah. You know, we've worked with so many women over the years in providing um, the hands-on services of providing prenatal care and doing births and seeing their newborns. Um, but we want to have a broader reach and um, the biggest way we found that we can do that is by doing capacity building in our providers and so that's such an important component to us in this program uh, we'll be training um, eight Haitian healthcare providers in these methods three doctors three midwives and two nurses um, and they'll receive full training and then they're going to be the ones um, giving the care for the year long. So we thought it was perfect to combine training with application because we all know that the only way that practice makes perfect. And so um, by being involved in this program year long, we're essentially hoping to train the trainers um, so that they can then go out and reproduce this at other clinics, at other hospitals. They can teach other providers uh, how to do, um, you know, BIA and cryotherapy. And so really our future plans for Mama Baby are um, to find ways that we can increase capacity building and training in both midwives and doctors and, and those who want to know these techniques so they can serve more women. Okay, wonderful. Well, we're coming close to the end of the Google Hangout, so this is my last question for you. Uh, since you were founded post-earthquake, what has it been like to be working in Haiti after the earthquake and what are you seeing? What are the stories you can tell us? Yeah, the impact that the earthquake had here on the north. Um, so the earthquake didn't actually shatter buildings here, but essentially it shattered infrastructure and systems in Haiti. And so northern Haiti was heavily impacted by people coming here, especially seeking health care services um, and an influx of, of a higher population here. Uh, part of that, too, uh, means that the infrastructure for training health care providers in PAP is where it usually was in um, Port-au-Prince really fell apart and only now is starting to recover to develop more doctors and nurses and midwives. And so um, again, you know, so much of this is about reinforcing and strengthening the systems that exist. How can we be a part of it? And um, that those are the challenges that are post-earthquake that we've seen. Okay. Well, Leah, thank you so much for joining us today in our Google Hangout. Have a safe trip back home to the U.S. I, I understand you're returning soon. Um, mm -hmm. We wish best wishes to Mama Baby Haiti from all of us at Dining for Women, and we wish you all success. Thank you, everybody, for joining Dining for Women at this Google Hangout, and we will see you again next month. Thank you.